Welcome back, everybody. Being able to repeat a block of code is going to become incredibly useful to us as we go further with programming our robot. The while loop works by testing a condition, and if the evaluation of that Boolean or logical condition is true, it will repeat the code that is contained within it. So when we think of real life examples, we might say, um, while I'm hungry, keep eating, or while my pool is not full, keep filling it with water. Let's dive a little deeper and take a look at some examples. The basic syntax of the while loop looks like this. We start by typing the keyword while, and then we write the Boolean condition that we wish to test for and end the line with a colon. Like the if statement and other control structures in Python, the code that is part of the loop gets indented. This code will only ever run if the while loop test condition is true. Let's take a look at an example. So in this example, I am going to create a variable called counter, and I'm going to set it to equal 5. Then I'm going to create a while loop. So I'm going to go while. You can see how that's a keyword. It turns pink here in the editor. So while the counter is uh, greater than 0, and then colon, you can see that when I hit enter here, I am now on an indented line of text. So this is going to be the code that executes within the while loop. So inside of our loop, what we're going to do here is we're going to print the value of counter. And then we're going to subtract one from it. So we're going to go counter equals counter minus one. And that's all our program's going to do. I'm going to hit backspace here. The code here at line 16 is outdented. So you can see it's uh, outside of the loop. This is going to be the code that executes when the loop terminates. So here I'm going to write print uh, the loop has finished. And so what we have here is we have a variable counter set to 5. It's going to test to see if 5 is greater than 0, in which case it is. It's going to print its value. It's going to decrement counter by 1. And it's going to keep doing this until counter is 0, in which case 0 is not greater than 0. So this condition is going to be false. And our terminating condition here is going to print. So it's going to say the loop has finished. If I hit the Run button here, let's see if that is the case. So here we see at the bottom of the screen, if I make this a little bigger, that it prints 54321 and the loop has finished. Now, if you wanted to see this um, happen a little more granularly, I could take this slider here and slow down the interpretation of this Python code. So here when I hit run, what's going to happen is it's going to go step by step um, using the debugger here. And we're going to see this yellow highlighting bounce around a couple of times until the counter um, is eventually uh, equal to zero, at which time this condition will not be true. So here we can see that's printing the value of counter. It prints five. It's going to print four. And then it's going to do this a couple more times. So eventually we're going to get three. And then two. And then counters 1. 1 is greater than 0. It's going to print 1. And now 0 is not greater than 0, so we're going to watch this highlight and come here to the loop has finished. And we see it down here in our debug window. The loop is finished. In this second example, I'm using a Python while loop to control a mimic. Now I happen to have an IQ touch LED sensor and a motor that has a 48 tooth gear attached on top of it. What's interesting about this while loop on the left hand side is that it is testing a condition that is always true. And we can see that that is the case because of the special highlighting of the word true. It's in pink. So this is a program that runs inside of an infinite loop. This is, this is always going to be true, so the code in here is going to execute forever. And what we're doing here is a basic evaluation. If the touch LED uh, sensor is being pressed, so I'm going to take my mouse and touch the touch LED, then the motor will run and the touch LED will turn uh, green. And we can see that this is taking an RGB value with the 200 being the um, uh, number for green. Else, the motor is going to turn off and the LED is going to display in red. 
I have a little tiny sleep here at the end and it was asked in an earlier rendition of this video what this is doing. It's just giving me enough time here, this sleep, to take my finger off of the touch LED. Uh, otherwise the computer obviously moves a lot quicker than I do in fractions of a second and it's never going to detect uh, the absence of my press. So I've added this little sleep here at the bottom just to give me enough time to get out of the way. Let's run this mimic and see what happens. So I'm going to go up here and give this a kick. So the Mimic is running and we can see that the default condition is executing, the motor's off and the touch LED is red. Now this is always true, so the program's running. We can see down here that it's telling us that the Mimic is still running. So now I'm gonna take my mouse and uh, press this touch LED and let's see what happens. So now the touch LED is being pressed, the light's green and the motor is spinning. I take my finger off of the mouse and pull it away, and the Mimic stops. Press it again, Mimic's on. And this goes on and on like this because this while loop is always true. Well, there you have it. That is the while loop in all of its splendor. If you've enjoyed this video, please give me a like and consider subscribing to this channel for more information on using Robot Mesh Studio with VEX robots.